Check, 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 test, test. Yes? Yes. Oh, the microphone's a little loud, right? Oh, hold on. Check, 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 test of the clipping. Oh, the clipping. Check, 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 test, test. Clipping, clipping, any clipping? No, no. One second. Just a slight midge to the right, clipping, clipping, edit clipping. Oh! Oh, wow, that's a big difference. I just barely touched it. Okay. Check, check, check. Test! Test! Test, test, test. Test! Okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. I had to adjust the gain a little bit on my uh, preamp there to uh, do some recording for the latest latest lore videos that I've done. And, and I had to alter it again just to... <clears throat> and just to do the live stream. Good to see everybody. Happy Thursday, everyone. So sorry that I missed my broadcast yesterday. I was recovering from the uh, from producing the epic 40, 50 minute long review of the Fallout series show. Uh, that took a lot out of me and I needed sleep. And so I slept through my entire Wednesday, pretty much. Sorry about that. I am uh, now working really hard to get a video done for the weekend. I do hope to have another video about the Fallout show done in time for Saturday. That's the plan. That's the goal. And you guys will enjoy it. But for now, here I am, Thursday night, ready for more scotch and smoke rings. Good to have each and every one of you on the show today. We've got Flashlight Man, HM Grant, Zemo47, DaBob, Neo Show at, on Twitch today. And of course, we've got Toby Noble on Facebook today, along with Luke Berman and all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today Alt Grendel, Sean Fernando, The Magic Q, Alien Face, Laura L. Stodd, Random Gray Main. Just Cowboy, Wade Speakerman, Tony J, Adam M, and it's Julian Z with the first super chat of the day who says, Hello, Ox. So good to see you on this Scotch and Smoke Rings. Hope you're well. Did you read that IGN interview with Todd Howard? They addressed the timeline issue with New Vegas. I need your thoughts on the issue. Are you less concerned? Yes, I did read it. And yes, I'm less concerned. But no, that doesn't make what we see in the show less of a mistake. And this is something I don't really understand. I don't understand how so many people are not understanding how this is a mistake. Um, uh, so what basically what, uh, what he's talking about, and spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't see, seen the show yet, uh, but there's a scene in the, the Fallout show where we find a, a chalkboard in Vault 4, and we learned that Shady Sands quote unquote fell in 2277. Hold on a second, I think my cat is in here. Chatter! 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 Chatter, what are you doing? What are you doing in the office? He got a haircut. What are you doing? You want out? You want out? Yeah? You want to go outside? You want to go get some food? You want to go get some food? Okay, all right. I have this job. Come on, go out. Oh. I'm coming on. I'll take you out. Ah. Okay, there we go. What was I saying? Oh, uh, to make a long story short, they got the wrong date for the fall of Shady Sands on the chalkboard. And we assumed that it was the wrong date because the, the events of Fallout New Vegas happened in 2281. But the chalkboard says that Shady Sands fell in 2277, which means that the NCR already fell before the NCR arrived in the Mojave Wasteland to participate in the events of Fallout New Vegas, which of course is impossible. Uh, now... Many people have tried to explain this away by saying, well, uh, there's an arrow next to the date pointing at a nuclear bomb, and, and that really means that the bomb happens after the date on the chalkboard. Which, you know, it's not how timelines work, number one. 
Uh, but the, the reason that this is a problem, well, first, first of all, uh, it, it's such a problem and it was so poorly, it's, it's information that was so poorly conveyed in the show that Todd Howard field or I'm sorry, felt that it was necessary to clarify, right? And so he did. And that's great. The clarification is exactly what we needed and he should have clarified because it was a big problem and it was poorly communicated in the show. But my problem now is that there are some people saying that it wasn't poorly communicated in the show and that the problem is really on all of us who are interpreting it wrong. And um, my argument is that, no, we're actually interpreting it right. It's incorrect in the show, and here's why. If, as we now know, the NCR fell after the events of Fallout New Vegas, then they had to have fallen in 2281 or 2282. Um, but the date on the chalkboard is, you know, four or five years before that time, right? So many people are trying to excuse this by saying, well, by fall, the chalkboard really means decline. They didn't really fall in 2277. That was the beginning of their decline, which ultimately ended in the bombs dropped, which dropped at an indeterminate time somewhere after the events of Fallout New Vegas. Okay, sure. But if that were the case, then they should have used the word decline and not the word fall. But another reason that doesn't hold up to plot scrutiny is because we have no indication that the NCR ever did decline. And in fact, we have every indication that the NCR did not decline. And these are major story spoilers. So if you haven't watched the show, stop listening for about two minutes. But we learn that... The NCR was destroyed suddenly in a nuclear explosion and not a nuclear explosion of their doing. It wasn't because they went to, the, to war with Caesar's Legion. It wasn't because they went to war with any other tribes on the West Coast. It wasn't because the Brotherhood of Steel attacked them. It was because a society underground for the last 200 years discovered that they existed, thought that they shouldn't, and decided to blow them up. That's not their fault. That wasn't an event that happened slowly. It wasn't a decision that was made slowly. It, it wasn't something that the NCR could ever predict or even prevent. It was an immediate action. It wasn't part of a decline. So, I mean, maybe you could say that, okay, the, de the decline happened when um, <clears throat> Rose left Vault 33 and she arrives at the NCR and that was the beginning of the end. And then we don't know how long she was above ground, but we do know it was so short of a period of time that when Lucy thinks back to it and remembers that period of time, she thinks she was imagining things. She thinks she was feeling things like the heat from the sun that she wasn't really feeling. She was so young that memory wasn't able to um, adhere. Her long-term memory wasn't able to be established. Had she really been outside of the vault for four years so that the events of Fallout New Vegas could happen, she would remember that right? Which she doesn't. So it's more than just interpreting the information on the timeline wrong. It's that that date shouldn't be on the chalkboard at all at this point. Now that we know what Todd Howard has said and that the fall of Shady Sands definitely happened after the events of Fallout New Vegas, and since we know the, the events of Fallout New Vegas happened in 2281, that date, 2277, just shouldn't be on the chalkboard at all. It's unnecessary, it confuses things, and it's factually wrong. It doesn't hold up to plot scrutiny. So, anyway, that answers your question, Julian Z. And yes, I did hear about the interview with Todd Howard. And I'm glad they cleared it up. Nick says, let's go. Let's good. Let's good? Let's go. Good evening, all. Good evening, Nick. So good to see you, my friend. <clears throat> all right, where were we? Um, let me get my glasses on. Mike H. says, Hey, Ock, so happy to see the Fallout Show meeting our lofty expectations. Have an awesome stream and a toast of Maker's Mark to you. A toast of Maker's Mark to you and also a little bit of Glenn Livet. Cheers. Ant444 says, I saw something that said Nate was the laughing soldier from the Fallout 1 opening. Thoughts? Um... Uh, no, that can't be true, because Nate was wearing T-45 power armor uh, during the opening slides of Fallout 4, and T-45 
was used during Operation Anchorage. The opening sequence in Fallout 1 was actually American troops pacifying Canadians after the annexation of Canada. The troops were shooting Canadians in the street. And the pacification of Canada that happened after the annexation of Canada happened after Operation Anchorage. So first they won Anchorage with T-45, then they were issued T-51, which they used in a variety of operations. I think they went to the Gobi Desert and uh, went to mainland China in the T-45 and then also went and, you know, pacified the locals in the uh, North American continent with the T-51 before getting the T-60, which was used just shortly before the bombs dropped. So since the guy in Fallout 1 was wearing T-51, it couldn't be Nate because Nate wore T-45. Levartation says, you yelling, test, sounds like Pee Wee Herman, sorry, thumbs up. Uh, is that what Pee Wee Herman sounded like? <laughs> I gotta, you know, I gotta make sure that I'm not clipping. I'd hate to, you know, burst your eardrums. Aaron Barlow says, finished up season one so I can watch all, uh, watch live this week. Enjoyed the review video. Cheers. Thank you, Aaron Barlow. Much more Fallout show stuff to come. Imperial CW on Twitch says, what about the X01? The X01 was never actually released publicly. It was an experimental suit of power armor, hence the name X01. It was, uh, was used in promotional stuff, which is why we only find a suit of X01 uh, behind the glass in um, Nuka World, during the Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4. Uh, so it was never actually released publicly to the troops, which is why the Enclave had access to it. The Enclave is the remnants of America's government, and they're the only ones who were using the highly experimental version of uh, power armor that had yet to be released because... They had access to it. Now, there is a problem in Fallout 4 because the power armor frames that are scattered around the wasteland are level-coded, which means that the type of power armor that appears on the frames is generated based on your level when you find the frame. And since you can find the frame at a high enough level that generates a pair of X01, then that means X01 power armor could appear in, like, a, a, an abandoned military stockpile or something like that, which it shouldn't be in, right? It, that's a bit of a canonical problem. So I can see why people would be a little frustrated by that, but that's a game mechanic issue, not necessarily a lore issue, right? Jackson MC says, most people say the Brotherhood of uh, Steel ending and Fallout 4 is canon. Is that true? Not necessarily. And I covered this in my review video that I published on Wednesday, yesterday, <clears throat> but the show does make it impossible for two endings in Fallout 4 to be true. It makes the Institute ending impossible and the Railroad ending impossible. And the reason for this is because the Brotherhood that we get to meet during the show are taking orders from Maxon's Brotherhood in the Commonwealth. They listed the Commonwealth specifically by name, not East Coast, not Capital Wastelands, Commonwealth. And the only Commonwealth Brotherhood is Arthur Maxon's Commonwealth Brotherhood. The events of the show take place um, years, 19 years after the events of Fallout um, 3, and nine years after the events of Fallout 4. And so if they're taking orders from the Commonwealth Brotherhood nine years after the events of Fallout 4, the only explanation is that the administration of the Brotherhood survived the events of Fallout 4 so that they could issue orders later to the West Coast. That's only possible if one of two things happened. If the Brotherhood of Steel won the events of Fallout 4 by destroying everybody except the Minutemen, or if the Minutemen won. If we got the Minutemen ending, but we got the variation of the Minutemen ending where they leave the Brotherhood of Steel alive. With the Minutemen ending, you can destroy the Brotherhood or you can leave them alive. And it's based on the quests that you complete up to a certain point. And I'll get through all of that when I start my series on the Minutemen because I haven't done that yet. I've done the Railroad. I've done the Institute. I still need to do the Brotherhood and I still need to do the Minutemen. And we will get there. But of course, the show has dropped. So now I'm kind of busy with that. So, yeah, kind of. Um, Faf says, I would love to hear your thoughts on the IGN interview. Well, there you go, Faf. I think I did that at the very beginning. Uh, essentially, it's good to know that Todd Howard addressed the issue and that he said the right thing. And the right thing is that 
uh, the events of Fallout New Vegas are canonical and they did happen before Shady Sands was destroyed. He should have said, we got the date wrong in the show. That would have been nice to hear. He didn't say that, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, but anyway, as long as we know that New Vegas is canonical, that's important. Ubra Rubra Ur says, you love the show. It revs your engine. Admit it. Admit it. You love it. It just works. I mean, I, I, you saw my video. I gave a review of the show uh, yesterday, and I gave it 8 out of 10 stars. So that's pretty good. I, I liked it. Paladin Dance's girlfriend says, uh, what if Shady Sands date was intentionally wrong? Perhaps they have a reason to lie. I also wanted to check the dates between Lucy's age and Rose's disappearance. That's interesting, and it's certainly something that I'll do before I get into my... Uh, uh, well, I'm going to be doing a video on the NCR, and we'll cover this topic in that video. But <clears throat> though it's possible that they got the date wrong, I think it's unlikely because the people who wrote that date in the chalkboard, uh, on the chalkboard in Vault 4, were survivors of the destruction of Sa Shady Sands. They lived through it. If there was anyone who knew the date of the destruction of Shady Sands, it would be them. So, I mean, it's it's kind of... In history, we learned that there's firsthand... Uh, reports and secondhand reports and firsthand reports always take precedence firsthand reports come from people who lived through something saw it themselves participated in, in the event themselves those are always believed more than people who are repeating something that they heard right uh, Herodotus was repeating things that he heard which is why his histories was secondhand information and it included a lot of you know, lies, really. Like he told a story about ants that dig for gold out in the middle of the desert, which is ridiculous, right? <laughs> because he was telling a story that he heard. That's a secondhand story. Thucydides, however, actually lived through the Peloponnesian War. He fought for Athens during the Peloponnesian War, which is why his history of the Peloponnesian War is seen as a higher historical document because it's relaying firsthand information, information that he either witnessed himself participated in himself or worked alongside the people who lived through those events himself. So if we've got people from Vault 4 who are saying that the bombs dropped in 2277 because they lived through it, we kind of have to believe them because they lived through it. That's why it's a big issue. Man of Warb says, so Shady Sands went to Kaboom after the events of Fallout New Vegas. This ought to be called the Shady Sands Shuffle from here on, methinks. <laughs> that's, uh, that's so true. That's so true. That's absolutely true. Alt Grendel says, saw a game the children might enjoy, Planet of Lana. Planet of Lana. Let me Google that real quick. Oh, interesting. All right. Let's see what the uh, review is. Very positive reviews. Released last year. Okay, cool. I'll have to explore that with the kids. Thank you, Walt Grendel. Hat on the Cat says, I haven't watched the Fallout show yet, but I read that it reveals who launched the nukes first. How do you feel about such an important event being revealed in the show instead of the games? I'm a little disappointed. Um, you know what? Uh, I think I would have rather that it was revealed not in one game, but... O over all of the games. The way I would have preferred it to be revealed is that we need a little bit of information published in each game or in a variety of games that once put together paints a picture of who actually was responsible for dropping the bombs. That would be much more interesting and it's, it's such important information that I think we would have earned it have we had we have to go through all of that information. But for it to just sort of be told to us at the end of the series, it's, you know... I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's certainly a plot device that's popular. It's something people have been able to predict for over 10 years, and it's something that was in an earlier version of a script for a canceled Fallout movie. So it's not a unique novel or new idea. Uh, and it's not necessarily bad, but I wish it had been something else. I wish it had been a little bit different. But I'll be talking about that in a different video. Uh, Tilly says, I've been keeping my eye out for Vault Tech Caviar on Etsy for you, for your shelf. Oh, thank you, Tilly. If you ever see Vault Tech Caviar or oysters, <laughs> let me know and I'll get them. Uh, get Sarah says, very confused about House. Alive, he'd be a liability. And yet, 
Okay. Spoilers again. If you haven't watched the series yet, stop listening for about a couple minutes. I'll take a drink. Iridian Nalo says there's an interview that clears all this up. It's on YouTube channel IGN with Todd and Jonathan. All right, I will look that up afterwards. Um, the thing is, when the vault person who survives the end of the show starts walking off into the wasteland, he starts walking towards New Vegas. It's the last thing we see at the very end. Why would he be going to New Vegas? Well, the only reason I can think of is that he's going to see Mr. House. And if that's true, then it means that the Mr. House ending for Fallout New Vegas is really canonical, right? <clears throat> or, you know, I, I don't remember if you can leave House alive inside with the NCR. I think you can. <laughs> At any rate, uh, it means that House is still alive. Uh, and we know that House was there during the great game conversation in vault Tank headquarters so he was a part of it though him being a part of it does have some contradictory information that we'll have to deal with if we learn that that's the case because he seemed to be surprised about the time when the bombs dropped during fallout new vegas which is why he got caught with his pants down uh without the platinum chip had he know when, known when the bombs were going to be dropped he wouldn't have lost the platinum chip it was supposed to be delivered that day but the bombs dropped that day. You wouldn't schedule the platinum chip to be delivered on the day the bombs were going to drop if you knew they were going to drop. So we do have a little bit of a problem there. Maybe, maybe. Uh, the writers of Fallout Season 2 should hire you to work with their plot holes. Thank you, Ward Robots. I'll let them know that I'm interested. Rachel says, hi, it's me, your friendly neighborhood enabler. Levartation added a perfectly preserved pie to his shop. I just tweeted you a link. Oh, dear Lord. I'll have to check it out. Thank you very much, Rachel and Levartation. Uh, the Raging Krogan says, also makes me very worried about the rumored Mass Effect TV show. It would break my heart to see them do something like this to it. Well, Raging Krogan, the Fallout TV show is, is highly reviewed and extremely popular. It's a good show that makes a few mistakes. And I think that it's probably the best a show like this could be. Uh, there's no game to TV or game to film adaptation that has ever gotten it right. None. I mean, even The Last of Us, as excellent as it was, did get some things wrong, right? So, uh, that's just the, uh, the nature of it, right? If there ever, ever is a Mass Effect TV show, which I, I've heard those rumors myself, they'll probably omit certain things and maybe get us a few things wrong. Uh, wrong. Julian Z says, I've also seen people using Maximus's age to say the bombs dropped on a different date if Maximus was eight when he crawled out of the fridge. Then based on his age now, counting back, you get a different date. That's assuming he's eight. We don't know how old he is. We know that he was a child, a child of an indeterminate age. We don't know how old that child was, right? Maybe he was seven. Maybe he was six. Maybe he was nine. Somewhere in there. But that's kind of a big deal if you're talking about a five-year gap between the events of, or I'm sorry, a four-year gap between the events of Fallout New Vegas and 2277, right? It's kind of, we kind of need to know exactly when, he, or how old he was in that scene if we're going to use that scene as an anchor to show when Shady Sands was destroyed. Um, Random Greymane says, what about the Hidden X01 in Boston? Uh, Hidden X01 power armor in Boston? I guess I don't know what you mean. Are you talking about in Hub 360? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it would have to be explained from a lore perspective. Uh, but, uh, the, the plot is that X01 is an experimental version of power armor. Troubled Raven says, which was more emotional for you? The family that died from poison or Rose's fate? Probably Rose's... Uh, I hope I hope you guys have seen the show by now. All of these questions are revealing pretty big spoilers, okay? So it's hard for me to answer them without revealing spoilers. So just, if you don't want any spoilers, <laughs> wait until we play the game, okay? But for right now, I'll be giving spoilers to the show. Uh, the fact that she died, 
and she became a ghoul due to the nuclear radiation from the bomb that destroyed Shady Sands, and that uh, Moldaver continued to love her anyway and kept her ghoulish body in NCR headquarters. It's it's just really sad. The Raging Krogan says, Ox, I finished the Fallout show and am disappointed. I don't like the many retcons and plot holes, especially about the war in vault Tech. It became too political at the end as well. Um, I agree that it did become a little bit political. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed that they turned the great game from the show into the great game of capitalism. Uh, things like that were a bit frustrating. Um, but in terms of the war, the nuclear war of 20, uh, 2077, the beginning date, I explored this in my review. There's conflicting information about when the bombs dropped in the games themselves. That's the source material. So if the games themselves can't even get that time or date right, then we can't expect the show to either. And they didn't. Like, if it was 947 in the morning in October, then they got it wrong. But Old World Blues tells us it happened at a different time. There's a Carol in the Undercity that tells us it happened at a different time. The clocks in New Vegas tell us that it happened at a different time. Which are we going to believe, right? Mr. House told us that it happened at a different time. It's, it's a lot of conflicting information. Uh, and I'm a little bit uh, disappointed by the vault Tech's reasoning for it all. I think it's a bit wishy-washy. It doesn't, like... It's weird because if there was anyone who sat down and thought about it for 60 seconds who wasn't an idiot, they'd realize that this was a really bad idea, right? The entire premise is that they want to perfect humanity by destroying all humanity that's not them because they're perfect, because there's no more competition if there's no one left but themselves. It's not only evil, but it's naive. It's naive to think that that even if only members of vault Tech and people who lived in vault Tech vaults survived from the... Even, even if we buy that that's possible, because they're completely discounting the possibility that people will survive above ground, which of course happens, which is why they had to bomb Shady Sands. They ignored that before the bombs dropped, so that's flaw number one. But flaw number two is that it's a huge assumption to believe that People from vault Tech and people in vault Tech vaults aren't going to have differences of opinion. And that's where different factions come from. That's where wars and conflict come from. It's from differences of opinion. They're going to kill everybody else that isn't them because they think that their people will all have the same opinion, but they can't guarantee that, which of course is why 200 years later, people in Vault 33 have a variety of different opinions, right? Uh, it's just so no rational human being would make that decision. And I, I get that we're supposed to believe that that vault was evil and, and irrational, but it's just so irrational. I don't like when Ulysses chooses to do it, I almost buy it because he's an uneducated tribal who has learned everything he knows about politics and society from, you know, traveling the wasteland and working with the bear and working with the bull, right? He's got this sort of jaded, naive, childlike view of humanity, which is why he wants to destroy everything and begin again. I can almost forgive him because he's a tribal, but vault comprised of all of these executives working out of vault Tech, the richest company in the world that owns almost half of the companies in the world, they're the ones who come up with this idea? I, I don't, it's really, I don't buy it, right? At any rate, I'll be talking more about that later. Cheng Yang says the Avenger needs you, Ox. Grab your power armor. Thank you, Cheng Yang. Retro Wave gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you, Retro Wave. And congratulations to JT Dude, James Trucker, Police Baby, Uriel Septum, Sam Timothy. Thank you very much. Ward Roberts says Oxhorn, there was a pre-war ghoul, Eddie Winter, and it's possible that the doctor that irradiated him might have known about the cure while commenting on Oswald and Rachel trying to find the cure. Yeah, but that proves my point in the video. The fact that pre-war ghouls are so rare proves that there wasn't a widespread mass need for a cure to ghoulism, right? 
Most of humanity didn't even know you could become a ghoul by being exposed to radiation. Only people who were really wit rich and in the know, or guys like Eddie Winter who were big time mob bosses with governmental connections, knew that you could become an immortal ghoul by being exposed to radiation. They're the only ones who knew which is why they're the only ones we find as ghouls before the bombs dropped. So if there was a cocktail that could cure ghoulism, it wouldn't be found in every pharmacy in every Super Duper Mart. It wouldn't be found in every doctor's office. It would be a rare drug because you don't put something on sale for public consumption if there is no public consumption. It's curing something that, to the public's perception, doesn't exist. It's a post-war problem, which is why I'm thinking that it's probably not a pre-war drug. It's probably a post-war cocktail made from pre-war ingredients. That, I think, is probably the best explanation. Bustavo Plays says not to argue with the lore, but God. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, not to argue with the lore God, but didn't Hank get Lucy and Norm back from Rose, went back to Vault 33, and then decide to bomb Shady Sands? Yeah, another thing that's weird, right? Because the only people left alive are Bud's Buds. The only people from vault Tech who are left alive are Bud's Buds. And we see a list of names inside Vault 31. And it's a short list. It's not a big list. I'm left with the question, okay, Hank, you and what army? Because she's in Shady Sands, which is protected by the NCR army. If you go back to a scene when um, Norm was having a problem with his own cowardice, Beth comes and talks, or I'm sorry, Betty comes and talks with him. And it wasn't that scene. It was, uh, it was a scene where he congratulates Betty for cleaning up Vault 32 so quickly. And um, he says, whatever happened to my mom's pip boy? She says it was buried. He says, how do you know? She says, well, because your father buried her and I helped. That, of course, is foreshadowing to what we ultimately learn. Hank buried her by bombing Shady Sands. And Betty helped. So Hank and Betty are the ones who went to Shady Sands, took Norm and, and Lucy, brought them back, which, of course, neither Norm nor Lucy remembers for some reason. Like, they don't remember any of that. Being violently stripped from your mother against your will and her will seems to be one of those primary memory moments, right? Where you're going to have a memory of that somewhere, but uh, no, she just remembers the feeling of the hot sun on her back, I guess. So but despite that, we'll put that aside for a minute. Somehow, those two vault dwellers, assuming Betty even went with him, managed to leave Vault 33, travel all the way to Shady Sands, and kidnap Lucy and Norm under the nose of the NCR without them knowing, get them back to Vault 33, and then drop bombs? Drop nuclear bombs. How? How? They don't explain that. I suppose we, need, we, we can just assume that Vault 31 has access to pre-war America's nuclear arsenal. Maybe Bud, who still exists as a brain in a jar, has access to that arsenal and can destroy any point on the planet at the push of a button. Maybe... But they don't specify that. They don't explain how it happens. They just explain that it did happen. And that's a narrative technique that it works, but it's a little lazy. If you really want to sell it, you not only explain that something happened, you explain how it happened as well. But you don't explain why it happened because that makes it easier to get away with explaining that it happened. You don't, if, if you explain how it happened, then you're open to making mistakes, which is why they don't explain how it happens, which is frustrating. Rachel says, were houses, bunkers, and New Vegas vault Tech vaults? If not, do you think he had a falling out with vault Tech after the big meeting in the show? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, houses bunker in, uh, uh, underneath the Lucky 38, it doesn't have any of the same architecture as any of the other vaults we've seen. Whether the vaults from Hidden Valley, uh, which were very unique, to, uh, they, they had more in, in, 
common with Raven Rock than they did with anything else, so it appears to be like a pre-war military structure, but they didn't have any architectural resemblance to those kind of bunkers or to any of the vault tech vaults. It was sort of its own unique thing, so I got the impression, playing New Vegas, that Mr. House had that commissioned and just had it built under the Lucky 38. It wasn't related to American government or to vault tech. He kind of knew that it was coming, so he, he acted. And on his own, he made a contingency plan to shoot down the bombs, if they ever came, and to save himself. And it was all on him. But remember, he was part of the great game. He was one of the participants in the great game. In the Point Lookout DLC, we got the impression that the great game was um, to see who could survive the longest, which of course was... It makes sense co when compared to Fallout New Vegas because House's solution is to put himself in a, a pod that preserves his body biologically. But uh, the great game has changed a little bit in the show where it's no longer about who can survive the longest. It's about which company can best play the game of capitalism. So it kind of muddies the waters a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's quite possible that House had a falling out with vault -Tec. Okay, um... Let me scroll down. Wow, I'm, I'm way behind. You guys have a lot of questions today. Thank you so much. Wow, am I really that far behind? Holy cow, I need to... I need to start speaking faster. A cleansed in fire says a commenter on one of your videos pointed out to me that the show didn't necessarily reveal who dropped the bombs that they were just planning to. Ah, uh, good point. Good point. I mean, technically, you're right. You're right. <laughs> if they do that, though, I mean, that's kind of a dick move. Right? Can, can I call it that? To leave your entire audience with the impression that that vault Tech dropped the bombs... Only in season two to say, gotcha, we never actually said it was vault -Tec. We just implied it. Here's the real culprit. That would be, that would be a bit of a dick move, to, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but you're technically correct. Cleansed in fire. It's possible that that's not what happened. Brandon Belfed says, but wasn't the United States reorganized into 13 commonwealths? Would it not be right? to say that uh, all chapters of the Brotherhood of Steel, the Commonwealth's Brotherhood chapter? No, it wouldn't be correct because the reason that the Commonwealth is called the co uh, the Commonwealth is because it's the Commonwealth of Mass Massachusetts, right? Um, yes, it was it split up into 13 different Commonwealths, but they weren't all referred to as the Commonwealth. It wouldn't make sense. It makes sense for Boston, the area of Boston, to be referred to as the Commonwealth because even before the war, it was known as the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, no, I think it's very clear that by Commonwealth, they did mean Massachusetts. Zartu says, what are your thoughts on the airship we see actually being the Pridwin? The name is written on the side. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I don't think it's a big deal. Um, so... We're told that it's the Cosmonon, and that's not something that Vanity Fair would come up with because it's too there's too much research behind that name. Before they told us that it was the Cosmonon, the Cosmonon was a really archaic name that only history geeks would even understand. So it's unlikely that Vanity Fair made a mistake and just called it the Cosmonon, which means that Amazon Prime came out and told them the name of the ship, and they told them that it was the Caswanon. Now, what you're saying is true. If you put on the 4K version of the show, and if you pause it at just the right time, and you zoom in on the airship, yes, you can see the words Pridwin written on the side. But I'm betting that it's a mistake. I'm betting that they just ripped the 3D model of the Pridwin from Fallout 4. That they ripped it from the game and reskinned it or, or, or did something to it, changed the lighting on it or whatever to make it work for the film. But I don't think it should say the Pridwin. I think that's probably a mistake. If they're going to miss the date of 2277, then they're going to miss something like 
the Pridwin being on the side of the of the Zeppelin. Um, we already learned from the Brotherhood of Steel that they got orders from the Brotherhood in the Commonwealth, so they're giving us the impression that at that time, the Brotherhood is still in the Commonwealth. If the Pridwin was actually here in California, that means Arthur Maxson would be in California, and the Commonwealth Brotherhood would no longer be in the Commonwealth. They'd be in California. So, I think it's a mistake. Really, I think it's just an accident. Kyle Biggs says, in another interview, they say they didn't include the cause slash dates of the downfall before the bombs because they're going to explore it later in the series. Okay, I'm going to go back to that interview and I'm going to watch it because that's important information. It's important information that should have been included in the show. In the show, we get the impression that the fall of Shady Sands happened suddenly and that it didn't have anything to do with the NCR or the NCR's choices. Um, but if the fall began in 2277, that, cor that corresponds with the, the uh, NCR's victory at the first Battle of Hoover Dam. So we can extrapolate from that that the fall of the NCR started because the NCR overextended themselves into the Mojave Wasteland, defeated Caesar's Legion at the First Battle of Hoover Dam, and from there on, things were all downhill, which is interesting and actually lore accurate. So I'm going to have to take a look at that interview before I make my video on the NCR. Thank you very much, Clell Biggs. Uh, Just Cowboy says, Wasting valuable things like the drop date on the TV show feel kind of like betrayal for fans that started before then. Yeah. No, that's a legitimate criticism. Um, that it, it, that's what frustrates me about it. I don't think that they're uh, canonically incorrect for destroying the NCR the way that they did, but uh, it's certainly a big... Screw you to the entire fan base, right? Um, maybe not the entire fan base. There are definitely Legion fans and House fans and Yes Man fans out there who didn't like the NCR and didn't side with the NCR. And they're probably not sad that the NCR was destroyed. But for many of us who have been with the NCR since the events of Fallout 1 and Arroyo and Shady Sands and Aradesh and Tandy... Uh, it's really a bummer that after nearly 25 years of fallout and investing in the NCR to have them taken away from us off camera, we don't actually get to participate or see that event. It just sort of happened and we're left wondering why it's kind of a bummer. Matthias Havsross became a, a bronze ox. Thank you very much, Matthias. Rachel says, hoping to see some live-action centaurs. I'm worried about how well Super Mutants will be done. Yeah, I I'm worried too, but not that much. Uh, you know, the creatures that they included in the Fallout show were pretty good. The Gulper was all right. It wasn't bad. I, You know, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad. It's, I didn't see the Gulper and think, ooh, bad CGI. There were other moments in the show where I did go, ooh, bad CGI, but the Gulper wasn't one of them. So if they did that creature well, I have hope that they're going to do other creatures like floaters and centaurs and super mutants well. Adam M. says, How did Hank not recognize Moldaver when she was pretending to be the overseer of Vault 32, if she was the one who almost stole his family away? Well, we don't have any information that Moldaver was the reason Rose wanted to stay in Shady Sands. We certainly get the impression that they probably fell in love sometime after... Um, well, no, because as soon as Hank discovered... That Rose was at Shady Sands, he went and got his kids and then destroyed it. So you're right, he, uh, Rose must have developed a relationship with Moldaver before the destruction of Shady, uh, Shady Sands, which, which means Moldaver must have been there at some point. But then again, we don't know that Hank went to Shady Sands and confronted Moldaver, or even knew about her existence. We get the impression towards the end of episode one that he thinks he knows who she is based on her reputation alone. Um, so... She's, he probably heard after he destroyed Shady Sands that the NCR was reviving itself. They were amassing troops and so on and so forth. And he probably put two and two together and, and figured out that it was going to be Moldaver. But the big lore issue, the big plot hole, is that the vault leaders, the leaders of Vault 32 and 33 should always be 
people from Vault 31, like him. He was from Vault 31. And the number of people who were from Vault 31 was a very short list. They were all Bud's Buds. Moldaver was never Bud's Buds. Moldaver was a scientist in a company that vault Tech acquired and then fired everybody. First of all, how is she still there? She didn't get in one of Bud's Bud's cryopods. Perhaps she got in another cryopod. We don't know. They don't explain it in the show. But she's not one of Bud's Bud's, so she never would have been an overseer in Vault 32 or 33, and Hank would have known that. Hank and Betty were really the only ones who would have known that. So the fact that the doors to Vault 32 open up, and not only is the overseer of Vault 32, whom he does know, not there and mysteriously died, but the person who replaced him is not from Vault 31. She's not one of Bud's Buds, and he didn't think that was a problem. That's a bit of a plot hole, and I discussed that in my video that I published yesterday. Ward Roberts says, the question is now how, and I have a theory, maybe the bombs came from Hopeville. It seems the closest, and vault might override the systems. It's a solid theory. Yeah, they could have come from Hopeville, or the ruins of Hopeville. Man of Warb says, guess Hank forgot that Shady Sands was founded by some residents of Vault 15. Yeah, that's uh, that's another problem, right? Those those are the descendants of Vault Dwellers. <laughs> uh, you're right. They were the descendants of Vault 15. And also Vault 8. We learned from the events of Fallout 2, or one of the ending slides of Fallout 2, that after the events of Fallout 2, Vault 8 got absorbed by the NCR. Vault City got absorbed by NCR. So by destroying NCR, they're not only destroying the descendants of Vault 15, they're destroying the descendants of Vault 8. That completely invalidates their entire experiment to begin with. That is them. The NCR was the descendants of Vault Dwellers. And they destroyed them, right? It's, it's infuriating. Paladin Dance's girlfriend says, could be unreliable narrator. Yeah, and unreliable narrator is bad storytelling. It's almost always bad storytelling. Um, especially since there wasn't really a narrator. The unreliable narrator story, story, storytelling trope only works if the narrator becomes a character in the story itself and we as the audience are able to divine the fact that the narrator is an unreliable narrator. But that's not the way the show is presented to us. Um, it's presented to us without a narrator and it's showing us glimpses of factual events that happen, which can't be true if... You go around and then in the future change everything, right? Uh, the Astro Nerd Boy says, love your Fallout review. Not sure if you've spoken about it, but what do you think about the apparent geographic relocation of Shady Sands? I need to rewatch the series for some plot issues I saw. Yeah, I, we talked about this, I believe, last week, but Shady Sands was um, northwest of the Boneyard, which was Los Angeles, and it was south east of San Francisco in Fallout 2. So it's between Sa San Francisco and Los Angeles. They're really far away from each other. Like, that's a great deal of space, right? You can calculate using the maps of Fallout 2 and the maps of Fallout 1 how far apart San Francisco and the Boneyard are in the, the map world of, of, the, of Fallout. And it's a, it's a huge distance with the NCR smack dab in the middle between San Francisco and Los Angeles. So for Shady Sands to be in Hollywood, that's a bit of a, of a retcon. You're right about that. Alt Brandle says, you know, I like to think that the reason the writing is so close to canon is because of all the blowback on The Witcher. Maybe. I mean, this is definitely a situation where um, viewers are voting with their dollars and with their eyes. And they want their shows to be successful. Only idiots completely ignore the will of the fans, right? Idiots like the showrunners of The Witcher who despise Americans and despise their fans. They're morons for doing that. And they should not be in charge of The Witcher as a television show. They just shouldn't be in charge. If you despise the people watching it, you shouldn't be making it. I think that um, you know, the people who made the Fallout TV show, they clearly love and respect the source material. And they clearly respect their fans. So everything that we bring up that we notice, I can only assume is an accident. 
or it's something that's going to be explained later in season two because they clearly went above and beyond going out of their way to make this entire thing just eye candy for the fans who have loved these games for 25 years. Rachel says, you think vault -Tec dropped the bombs or just encouraged it? I would think if vault -Tec did, Barb would have made sure her daughter was nearby when it happened. Yeah, that's another, that's another thing. I can't imagine that vault -Tec would just encourage it and not know when it was going to happen. Because remember, for vault -Tec's experiment to work, they needed Bud's Buds inside Vault 31. And if you leave it up to random chance... Uh, or unpredictability, then you don't really know if you're going to get all of your uh, Buds Buds, all of your vault Tech executives, into Vault 31 in time before the bombs drop. So that's a huge amount of risk for them to not know when the bombs are going to drop, especially when they have their own experiment that they're doing, the Vault 31, 32, and 33 experiment. But you're also right that Barb would be very... it, it Her entire point for working with vault -Tec was to get her daughter and husband at the time into one of the good vaults. And for her daughter and husband to be outside when the bombs drop, it defies explanation. So something happened to Barb, and they give us an impression that it was divorced, that they got divorced, and maybe he got custody. Maybe somehow he got custody. And, um, yeah... We don't really know. They'll have to explain that in the next season. The Raging Krogan says, Really, both China and the U.S. don't care about capitalism or communism. It was about each nation controlling the last resource on Earth. Yeah, uh, that's definitely part of the, the canon of the games. The reason they went to war is because uh, the United States kind of tricked communist China uh, into uh, making sure that they couldn't get the last fossil fuel deposit on planet Earth. Stephen Shouza says, did you hear of Todd's interview today? I did. It's been what everyone has been talking about during, in the chat today. Conker says, thank you, Ox, for your videos. A few months ago, I was in a dark place, and I used your videos as a catalyst to get help, and now I'm in a better place. So thank you, Ox. By the way, you missed my question. Conker, I'm so sorry if I missed your question. They've been coming in uh, like water from a tap today. I'm going to scroll up and see if I can find it. Uh, it's good to hear that you're in a better place. I'm glad to have been a part of that process. And I scrolled up as far as I could, and I don't see your other comment. So sorry about that, Conquer, but I'm glad you're here today. Tilly says, Hank's level of petty is unmatched. He does not respond to rejection well. Yeah, um, I mean, we could believe that that's what happened. Like, he bombed Shady Sands because he got spurned by his wife. Maybe. But I think the entire message we're supposed to walk away from is that vault Tech didn't act from an economic perspective. They didn't act from necessarily a, a power perspective. They acted from a philosophical pr perspective. Their philosophy was that um, the only way to, to get rid of war forever is if there's no one left to go to war with. And if the only people that are left are vault Tech people, then there will be no more war. Yes, stupid and naive, but that was their reasoning. It wasn't because of money. It wasn't because of power. It was because they wanted to end war, really. They wanted to get rid of competition, ultimately. And if Hank was a true believer in that, then he could have bombed Shady Sands out of principle, which is what he's trying to let us know. At the very end of the series, he tried to tell us, he tried to tell Lucy that he did the right thing. He knows he did. He did what he had to do. He did so out of principle, not because he was petty. So we just have to decide whether or not he's telling the truth. Do we believe him? Or did he really do it because he got spurned by his ex-wife? Grant Haber says, Always good to catch a scotch and smoke ring stream. Been missing you, uh, your morning streams due to playing Fallout New Vegas on my PC after buying it during the sale. Play on. Thank you very much, Grant Haber. Good to have you here. The Raging Krogan says, They turned vault into cartoonishly evil. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, <sighs> the experiments that went on in all of the vaults were so outlandish and so crazy that I really kind of wish they had dived and delved into that a little bit more. But instead, they used Vault Tech as the company that was responsible for the end of the world. 
for dropping the bombs. I liked it better when Vault Tech was just the evil company that did the creepy experiments in vaults. And trying to figure out that was the big question. But dropping the bombs is such a huge thing that now we're all trying to figure out why they would do that. And we're ignoring the creepy experiments in the vaults thing. So it's just... I wish they hadn't have used that plot device. Small Fry says, Your lore videos helped me sleep. Keep rocking the free world ox. <laughs> rocking in the free world ox. Thank you, Small Fry. Will do as long as the world stays free. Steven Chosa says, Also, maybe Vault Tech got help. Maybe, but if they did, they didn't explore it in the first season. Uh, oh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm still really behind. Let me try to catch up. Christ uh, Christopher Estrada says, I think it's inferred that Maldaver's first cold fusion reactor was sabotaged to blow up Shady Sands by Hank. By Hank and defrosted Vault 31 dwellers. Uh, I don't, th I mean, if that were true, if that were true, uh, so, so there, there's a lot, okay, possible, possible, but we, we got the impression that Moldaver's pre-war research into cold fusion was still owned by vault because vault bought up all of the companies that were working on cold fusion and then it was shuttered. It was set aside. That would explain why it took an enclave scientist and his team combing through vault records to find the data on cold fusion, produce, reproduce the technology and then let Moldaver know so that she could try to get it to come, uh, get him to come meet her so that he could, she could provide power to NCR. Um, if, that entire process had already gone on before the bombs dropped. Um, it, you, you, you would think that, that that once the rabbit was out of the hat, uh, that everyone would know about it, right? They gave us the clear impression that the destruction of Shady Sands was a nuclear event, not a fusion reactor sabotage. They didn't talk about that ever. Uh, they also didn't talk about defrosting the other Vault 31 dwellers at all, ever. Like, we even get to see a big list of Vault 31 dwellers, and there are still many that have not been reactivated. Uh, so, yeah, that's, it's interesting, but it's not in the show. That's not in the show. P-Town says, the Shady Sands mistake is a big deal, however. I want to know how Moldaver survived the fallout and hasn't aged as all, at all. Yeah, that's going to have to be answered in another season, because you're right, that's, that's a problem. She's not one of Bud's Buds, so she wouldn't have been in a cryopod. Jack, uh, Jay McKibe says, Hey, Ox, question. Have you reviewed big mods like Sim Settlements 2 and the lore tied to the game? It's tied pretty well. It's not canon, but it's good. I haven't yet. I did Sim Settlements 1 back in, in the day, but I haven't tackled Sim Settlements 2. I sure hope to. Kabobi says, Oxhorn, you got me through exams. Your streams rule. Thank you very much, Kabobi. Happy to have been there for your exams. Nick says, it's weird that Shady Sands would be targeted when the DC area has fresh potable water. Clean water is, a cru is crucial to building civilizations. Uh, true, but my explanation is that vault doesn't know about that. The only reason that Shady Sands was destroyed is because Hank discovered it when his wife fled there after she uh, escaped from Vault 33. There are a lot of things out there that vault doesn't know about. They, they don't know about the Midwestern Brotherhood surviving and possibly defeating the Calculator. They don't know about the Brotherhood on the East Coast surviving. They don't know about the Institute. They don't know about the Minutemen. They don't know about the followers of the Apocalypse. They don't know a great deal. If they did, they'd have to bomb it all because it goes against their world philosophy. One of the reasons they bombed Shady Sands is that presumably they didn't know that the people from NCR were descended from the Vault Dwellers of Vault 15 and Vault 8, right? Uh, had they known that, maybe they wouldn't have bombed them, right? Maybe they would have tried to integrate with NCR society. Who really knows? But I, I think that if they knew about um, the water cleaner in the D.C. area, they probably would try to bomb it. They just don't know about it. 
Stephen Chosa says also the interview implies the NCR might still exist. Todd said we haven't seen the last of them. Okay, that's good. I look forward to seeing more about them. Tilly says, uh, Conker says, I was disturbed and confused. Oh, this is Conker's message from before. Great. Thank you, Tilly. I was disturbed and confused with the scene in the Fallout show where the woman gives... Yeah, yeah. She gives birth to something and then gets eaten by them. Can you explain what that was all about? Yes, I can. What's the time look like? Well, it's your time, everybody. We I can keep going. Uh, yeah, and, and I'll be exploring that when uh, we go into my full story of Vault 4. But Vault, uh, Vault 4's entire experiment was to cross breed humanity with radiation resistant creatures. They were hoping to create a hybrid creature that maintained all of humanity's intelligence and soul with all of the strengths of the creatures that were immune to radiation and disease, right? Which is why we have this scene in Vault 4, which is really disgusting. A woman giving birth to aquatic monsters that in turn directly devour her. It's horrible and barbaric. But that's vault Tech. <laughs> vault Tech Spies says, if that is the print win in the show, does that mean the Brotherhood of Steel ending of Fallout 4 is the canonical ending? Extra long chat. Awesome. Thanks, vault Tech Spy. Um... Even if it's not the Pridwin, it still means that the Brotherhood survived the events of Fallout 4. For the West Coast Brotherhood to be sent on a mission to the East, uh, on, at the bequest of the East Coast, means that the East Coast has to have survived the events of Fallout 4. And that can only happen with the Brotherhood ending and the Minuteman ending. So, yeah. Um, but as for the Pridwin, honestly, I think it's a mistake. I think it still is called the Caswinon. And uh, they just used the model of the Pridwin from the game in the movie and just didn't change the skin, <laughs> which is a mistake. <laughs> That's what I think happened there. Steven Chauza says they never said Vault City was destroyed. I agree. I, I, I never said Vault City was destroyed either, uh, but the canonical ending to... So... Uh, if you take a look at the ending slides for Fallout 2, the ending slide where the NCR survives coincides with the end, with the ending slide for Vault 8 where they were unable to maintain the power for their civilization. Basically, they were trying to run the power needs of Vault City from the reactor inside Vault 8, and the needs of the city began to overwhelm the reactor. And so they allowed themselves to be annexed and absorbed by the NCR so that they could gain some of the NCR's resources. And that happened just a few out, a years after the events of Fallout 2. So since the NCR exists in the Mojave Wasteland during the events of Fallout New Vegas, and they are the preeminent power on the West Coast, we know that the ending slide for Fallout 2, where they allow themselves to be annexed by the NCR, must be the canonical one. That, of course, doesn't mean that Vault City was destroyed. It just got absorbed by NCR. KT says, Betty, the new overseer, is a Bud's Bud. She was a secretary at vault Tech. You see Betty when Cooper is spying on the meeting. Yeah, I put that together. Uh, also, Betty is the name that Bud is, ass is calling to when Norm enters Vault 30, 31 for the first time. So she's she's been there from the very beginning, and she was deep in Vault Tech's plans. Omega Volwin says, If Shady Sands fell in 2277 for whatever reason, then why did Lucy's mom take her to a fallen city? City was not good anymore, right? Uh, no, so I, I guess I don't understand what you're trying to suggest, suggest, um, if Shady Sands fell in 27, 2277, then that's the year, presumably, that Rose fled from Vault 33 with Lucy and Norm and sought shelter in Shady Sands. The reason it got destroyed is because that's where she went. It didn't get destroyed before she went there because... Hank wouldn't have discovered its existence before Rose left the vault. So 2277 has to be the year that she left for the vault. 
Unless what we learned from the Todd Howard interview is accurate, and that 2277 was just the beginning of the decline and not the fall of NCR. Okay, uh, Wade Speakerman says, Tension Breaker, what's the difference between a porcupine and a Mercedes? The porcupine has the pricks on the outside. Ah, I, I see. Oh, okay. Is there tension that needs to be broken? Is my conversation about the Fallout show causing tension? Causing angst amongst, amongst the crowd? Sorry. <laughs> Chininator says, Ox, I love the Fallout TV show. Do you think season two is about to reveal that Mr. House is still alive? That's kind of the impression that I got. I can't think of any other reason why Hank would be going to uh, New Vegas unless Mr. House was still alive. But we don't really know. We don't really know. Deuteronomist says, vault -Tec wanted to make a new society that they could rule and control with the work cast. The worker cast to be non-executives from other vaults, but no surface dweller servants. I mean, maybe, and yet they also have Reclamation Day, which was talked about in uh, West Virginia and talked about in Vault 31, 32, and 33. There was a specific day, Reclama Reclamation Day, that they were going to go out and restart human civilization. So unless that was fake and they just they were never going to do that, um, then it wouldn't make sense that they would just stay in the vaults to rule humanity there. Man of Warb says, and since when did Frederick Sinclair become the CEO of Big Mountain? Wasn't he just a customer who bought the vending machines and was made an unwitting test subject? And wasn't he younger? Yeah, his name was Fred, but it wasn't was was it Frederick Sinclair? Did I not read the name tag right? Oh man. You've got me interested. Was that Fred Sinclair? Did it say Frederick Sinclair or Fred? Because I know that when House talked to him, he said Fred. But does it actually say Frederick Sinclair? If that's the case, then that's a big problem. Because yeah, Frederick Sinclair was simply a customer of Big Mountain. He owned the Sierra Madre Casino. He was an investor in, in, in casinos and hotels. That's what his job was. He wasn't affiliated with Big Mountain, the big giant research, research group, right? So that would be an issue if that's the case. And of course, he doesn't look anything like the man we see in, um, in the show. Frederick Sinclair, we see his face. We see his face on murals inside the Sierra Madre. So, yeah. That might be an issue. Nuka Tom says, Tonight on Scotch and Smoke Rings, a fireside chat? A lore discussion? Another terrifyingly terrific tour de force? Who knows? All this and more tonight on Scotch and Smoke Rings. Thank you, Nuka Tom. Loquacious as always in a delightful way. Bernardo, Bernardo KDP says, is Wilzig from the Chicago Outpost in EDE's logs? I don't think so. No. I doubt that. I, uh, because Wilzig dies after the events of uh, Fallout New Vegas. And EDE, uh, the, the Chicago logs... The Enclave's Chicago logs. So it would it would mean that he had to travel from the East Coast, right? Because it was remnants. It was survivors. It was Enclave survivors from the East Coast who comprised the Chicago element of the Enclave. I could be getting that wrong. It's been a long time since I've thought about that. But I believe it was survivors from Raven Rock who went to Chicago and who were experimenting on Eddie E. On Ed E. Uh, they haven't given us any indication that Wilzig is from the Chicago outpost. Thomas McCormick says, uh, the show does not confirm that vault -Tec launched the nukes. It simply Im Im implicates that they had to a plan to do so with other corporations at the time. That's it. We still don't know who instigated the Great War. 
That's a good point. Raised earlier in the show, but you're right. Oliver Powell says, which ending of Fallout 4 do you think was chosen? I'm hoping the Institute has been destroyed. Well, Oliver, we know that the Institute has been destroyed. It's impossible for the Brotherhood of Steel to still exist nine years after the events of Fallout 4 and the Institute to remain alive. The only ending where the Institute remain, remains alive is the Institute 1. All other endings require the Institute's death, even the Minuteman ending. And the only... Um, and uh, and the only way to keep the Institute alive, to get the Institute ending, is to destroy the Pridwin. So yeah, if the Pridwin exists, the Institute doesn't. Lunar Knox says, Fallout Wiki says Frederick Sinclair was an executive of Big Mountain as well as a businessman. Um, the Fallout Wiki is historically accurate and inaccurate we have to realize that the wiki is edited by other people and sometimes things aren't uh, fact checked in a timely manner it's possible that there's a holotape at the sierra madre that says that frederick sinclair was an employee or an executive of big mountain and we just didn't know it but the entire premise of the um the sierra madre story was that Big Mountain executives were doing experiments on the workers at the Sierra Madre, Madre without letting Frederick Sinclair know about it. That's why the dark patches of mist exist inside the Sierra Madre, because it was an experiment from Big Mountain that Frederick Sinclair didn't know about. So it wouldn't make sense for Fred to also, to not only be the CEO and owner of the Sierra Madre, but also an executive at Big Mountain. Okay, Colonel 87 says, I'm genuinely mad. They better not try to change the game lore with one TV show. It's lazy. The game lore was there first. It doesn't matter what the TV show does. He should never have said that it was lore. Um, you know what? The show does a really good job of maintaining the continuity of the world, which is what they should have done. Uh, it would have been lazy for them not to do that. Uh, I don't, I don't like it when we sort of separate media into different canons. Well, the TV show has a completely different canonical timeline than the games, or the movies exist in a different timeline than the board game, or whatever, and I hate it when they do that. I, I, I like everything being one consistent world. So I'm glad that they said that the TV show was a canonical story in the events, in, in the world of the Fallout universe. There are a few lore problems, which we've been discussing all day. Timmy S. says, How was there a fall of Shady Sands leading to a detonation years later if Hank just blew it up? Did he cause a fall that lasted years? Yeah, that's that's the problem right there. You've, you've encapsulated it. A fall is an immediate event. A decline is something that takes place over years. We've got the decline and fall of the Roman Empire because those words mean different things. The Roman Empire both declined and fell. Fall doesn't mean decline. The two words are not synonymous, which is why when people are saying, well, when they use the word fall on the chalkboard, they really mean decline. They're not accurate. They're not being, they're not thinking about it because it is its own word for a reason. It means something different than decline. And it's on a timeline, which is not a flowchart. A flowchart uh, takes a series of images to make a, a story, tell a story or an argument over time leading to a conclusion. But a timeline is very different. A timeline highlights moments of time on a line. Hence the name timeline. That's, that's what it is. And if you've got Shady Sands being destroyed in 2277 on a timeline, that means that it's a point of time where a very instant event that is described as a fall happened. So if th that's that's something you're right, Timmy, essentially is, is you're right. If it did not fall and it was not destroyed in 2277, as Todd Howard has explained in the interview, apparently, then they 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 conveyed that information really poorly in that scene. And that scene needs to be altered to convey that information in a better way. 
That's all I'm saying. Thomas McCormick says, I'm a few minutes behind on the VOD, but chatters are hopping, hopping to way too many conclusions. Some of the assumptions being thrown around are just not true, given the show, give the show time to breathe. I mean, yes and no. Yes, we will know more about the universe as the show has time to breathe, but breathing is what we're engaging in. It's these conversations directly after the release of a new game or a show that get reactions from the developers or the showrunners and that get taken up by the entire community to come to a satisfactory conclusion that we can all agree on. So these conversations are important. Uh, it's true that some people are jumping to conclusions and then saying, that's the lore, that's the canon, and I hate it, or I love it. And that's too bad. That's a shame. Instead, it's better to step back and take a look at the evidence and go, it is saying that, and that is wrong. But maybe it can be explained in another season, right? Uh, it's, it's good to be impartial and open-minded to allow something to be good and allow it to be bad, depending on the merits of the claim being made. Timmy S. says, uh, how was there a fall of Shady... Uh, I read that one already. I'm scrolling up to find the other ones. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much. Whoa. Did all of those just come in? Okay. Yeah, Lunar Knox talks about Frederick Sinclair being a, an executive of Big Mountain as well as a businessman, and I don't believe that's true from the... Uh, the DLC, but I'll have to take a look at it a second time. Jay King says, uh, or Gianna says, the end scene in the show shows the New Vegas, that New Vegas did not look good in good shape, but maybe that's just me. It's not just you. The ending s scene, the ending pan out at the very end of the last episode, goes through the streets of downtown New Vegas, right in front of the Topps Casino, and we see the wreckages of NCR Vertibird as well as the wreckages of Securitrons. Something big went on down there, possibly a fight between the NCR and House, which was not good. Which leads me to think that maybe the NCR ending is the canonical ending for New Vegas. The NCR ending in which he cooperated with House, but then something happened that caused strife between the NCR and House, leading to a firefight in the streets of New Vegas. That's... Interesting. It's an interesting thought. Chininator says, Ox, I'm drinking Blackberry Crown Lemonade. Cool, Chininator. I'm drinking Scotch and Rum and Coke. Cheers. Steel 101 says, I think this TV show will tie into Fallout 5. I have uh, uh, the distinct impression that it will as well. Ward Roberts says, Cooper is Vault Boy. Didn't see that coming until I saw Vault Tech hired him for their ads. Yeah, he's the inspiration of Vault Boy. He was the original Vault Boy. Tilly says, 15 minutes over game time, Ox. Lights out, snacks out, Ox sets. Get those shot glasses ready. Yeah, I mean, you guys have lots of questions, so I'll keep going until they stop. But yes, we will get to the show. Ward Roberts says, quoting, Technicolor Tube Amazon announced to get today. Fallout has been greenlit for season two. Yes, I saw that earlier in the day. It has been greenlit for season two. I am thrilled. Nuka Tom says, ever since I saw the episode, I've been obsessing over the map of the vaults across the U.S. However, interestingly, there's a singular vault across the U.S. border inside annexed Canada. I'm dying to know what its purpose is and sl uh, who slash what's inside. I am as well. And there were also a number of vaults inside Mexico, if you take a look at that as well, on the map. Jay McKibe says, I had an idea that the timeline wasn't for the viewer. It was for the vault and their perspective of history. There was no date because everyone knows. That's an interesting way to, to interpret it. And uh, yeah, you're right. It, it wasn't for the viewer. It was for the people in the vault. Um, but it's interesting that they wouldn't have the destruction of NCR as a point on the timeline. It's weird that they kept that ambiguous. Omega Volwin says the show mentions that the Brotherhood of Steel got its orders from the Commonwealth. So I do think the ship being the Pridwin was on purpose. Um, yes, but people can communicate over great distances, right? And we saw that. Uh, the problem is that we see a scene where we've got scribes sitting down, uh, listening to a, a machine that's giving them beeps and signals that's allowing them to mark notes on a grid, right? 
they're getting information from the Commonwealth. That's them actively getting information from the co Commonwealth. But the Pridwin is right there. If Arthur Maxon and the Brotherhood Commonwealth was there, why didn't they just come down in a vertebrate and tell the information to the Brotherhood on the ground? Why would they go through the effort of making them decode this weird dots and dash Morse code uh, style of communicating um, when they're right there, right? It, it doesn't make any sense, which is one of the reasons why I think that isn't the Pridwin and it is the Kaswanon. Colonel 87 says, don't get me wrong, I like the show. I like it too. Sarah says, Todd should know better than to piss off the New Vegas fans. <laughs> yeah, you'd think you'd think they'd want to avoid that one. Ben Bex says, I'm just so stoked. The map shows my hometown has a vault in it. Not usual that my town, despite being the capital of a state, has representation. Well, Ben, congratulations to you. I also noticed that there was a vault in the Seattle area. And I'm excited about that. Guy Lee says, no question, just wanted to support the channel. You make excellent Fallout videos. Can't wait for the next one. Thank you, Guy Lee. I can't wait to get it out as well. Manta Ray Travel says, so I'm watching your videos from the first Fallout game, and I'm like, this Shady Sands is very different than the way the show, uh, than the one they show us on the TV. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's nearly 100 years before the events of, uh, of Shady Sands on the TV. So there's, there's that, but it, it is very different, yeah. Okay, I got to the end. There we go. Let's fire up the game and play more System Shock. We last played System Shock about 10 weeks ago or so, uh, and uh, we moved on to other games because they were new, but it's good to get back to System Shock, and I'm eager to be exploring the world again. Let's fire this up. Take a drink, Ox, says Sarah. Will do. I've been talking a lot. It's time to uh, wet my whistle. That Colin guy says, hey, Ox, sorry to go off track, but have you heard that uh, the Red Dead Redemption 2 theory that Dutch suffered a brain injury in the trolley crash and that that contributed to his downfall? Cheers, sir, and chat. Yes, I actually have heard that theory. And it does make a lot of sense. It, it makes sense that he suffered a concussion during the train uh, trolley crash or something because his personality... It altered. I wouldn't say it changed because he's still the same guy who walks around saying, I got a plan. I, I got a plan. Dutch has a plan. Uh, he's always got a plan. But this time his plan was not good. <laughs> not good. Not that his plans are ever good, by the way. All right. Let's, uh, let's dim the lights. hot I'm usually freezing my beard off in this office but hot right now maybe it's the rum Steph's movies and music says howdy ox you've probably answered this before but what got you into the fallout series it was a co-worker who got me into the Fallout series eventually. It was 2007, and I was working at a company called We Game, and I had a co-worker named Jeff Gornt, who uh, really loved Fallout 2, and Fallout 3 was getting ready to release, and he was really excited about it, and so his enthusiasm got me excited about it, and so I started playing it. I played Fallout for the first time, and it was unlike anything I had ever played before. And that's what got me into the Fallout franchise. 
Adam M. gifted five Oxhorn memberships. Thank you, Adam M. And congratulations to Chef Breckia, Jeremy M. It's Stassi, Jack Erickson, and Donald Moore. Amanda Huckabee with a very generous super tip. Thank you so much, Amanda. Nuka Tom says, an incredibly crazy thought. What if a pivotal character in season two is a certain Secura someone who can be in multiple places at once? Maybe he had a ground zero perspective of, of what happened in New Vegas. I mean, that's a, that's a cool thought. It is a cool thought to have house or victor <laughs> inside a securitron going from place to place that's an interesting thought oliver powell uh became a bronze ox thank you so much oliver powell Cannabisure says, 30 months in and I still get excited for scotch and smoke rings. Keep up the good work, sir, and have yourself a good rest of the week. Thank you very much, Cannabisure. I am, you know, 10 years into this and I still get excited for scotch and smoke rings. Are you kidding? I get to chat with geeks about geeky stuff and drink scotch and cigars. It's like every person's dream. All right, let's dive into the game. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. What's going on here? Okay, well, that works. <sighs> now the problem with waiting 10 weeks to play my next episode is that you forget what happened in those 10 weeks. Level security is now That robot still diagnostic logs. Okay, how am I doing on ammo? I've got seven rounds left. I've got nine rounds of that. I should be using this for the robots because it actually recharges. Diagnosis not available. Jared, you hear about this new viewing room up on Exec Deck? People are buzzing about seeing it, but what's to see? Spreadsheets displayed in ultra high definition? <laughs> Hit me up if you have any hints. Requires less than 45% security. Okay, so I need to lower security on this level in order to open the maintenance office. Diagnostic logs not available. Okay, yeah, we've got a ladder going on down here. Let's check it out. Signing off. Ooh. 
This ID belongs to Dr. Dario Domi. Can't find room for the shotgun. Okay, let's make room. There we go. So I've currently got a shotgun here, but this is the S SK-27. Is that the same thing? It is. SK-27. Well, I can empty the ammo. Oh, it's already, all right. Okay, we gotta drop it. That's it. Looks like that's it. Nothing else down here. What was that? Was that a robot or what? God, that tore me up. Right, well, I'm running low on health. So we got a ladder going down over here and then a door over here. Door blocked. No maintenance necessary. It's a maintenance door. Okay, let's go down and see what's there. Got an explosive, nice. Is that it? Oh, hello. What is this now?
God, I need health. I have nothing. I've got battery packs. I've got berserk. Did I kill it? I must have killed it. Okay. Okay, my YouTube chat is not uh, chatting appropriately. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it's off screen. Uh, Steel101 says, Hey, Ox, sorry if I harassed you about the chalkboard in Vault 4. I get carried away sometimes. I love talking about Fallout stuff. Cheers, buddy. No, you didn't harass me at all. I love it, too. Gianna says, How many ears does Captain Picard have? Three. A left ear, a right ear, and a final frontier. Cheers, Ox. Thank you, Gianna. Okay, let me try and move this over there. I wonder if it, if it would help for me to put this in. No, it's still off the screen. <laughs> There. All right, I can I can at least read it now. Okay, I need health. I need health. I need health. necessary. Aaron Williams says, first time on live and wanted to ask you if you were planning to play The Last of Us 2 when it comes out to PC. Rumors say this year for the PC version. Thank you very much, Aaron. Let me save the game here. Actually, let me just quick save. And yes, I will play it. what I did there. That's Daniel Belcher. That's DL Myth. Ooh, we 
got a freight elevator here. Okay. Okay, this puts me way back here, and I don't want that, so I'm going to load my quick save. The chat is now flown off the screen again. Hold on one second. Oh my god, this is so ridiculous. Where is it? What? <sighs> okay. Sorry folks, I need to figure this out so that I can actually see your responses. Okay, maybe I need to make it windowed. Uh, give me a second here. Let's um, go to options, display, full screen. Let's make that windowed full screen. Didn't seem to work. All right, let me restart the game. It's completely messing up my my monitors. To the point where I can't even see your chat. Uh, let me find this. Yeah, there we go. All right, I've got one chat up. New messages. Sorry about that, everybody. Let me move that over to the other side of the screen. I did just do an update before the broadcast, and perhaps that changed my default settings. Uh, but now I can't find the YouTube chat, so I'm going to have to get it again. Let me go to YouTube and get the chat up. Sorry about the delay. Wow. Escape Plan says, instead of using dual monitors, I use a tablet to check chat while streaming. It's better like this. Yeah, I mean, based on my experience... Right now, I think tech chat while streaming. It's better. There you go. I think your solution is indeed better, but this is what I have set up for me now. So I'm going to try and make it work. Greg Williams says, "Hey Ox, want to hear a joke about paper? Never mind, it's terrible." And I beat Fallout Tactics, but I didn't get the familiarity with the calculator. Oh, that's too bad. But still, congratulations on beating tactics. Okay, let me try this again. Hey, my other monitor is okay so far. The big question now is, will there be a lot of screen tearing? Nineteen twenty, ten eighty. Oh, it's set to full screen again. What? Oh well, at least it's working.
Oh, I'm here? No, okay, let's load my quick save. DNA sequencing, I'm thinking, but I really need medicine. Reactor research maintenance. happens till I if I wait till I've got a smidge of life left I was trying to get back to to Medved Right, healing was in the Delta Quadrant, right? Central Hub, De Delta Quadrant. That's where I need to go. So left, up, left. Okay, two frag grenades. Gianna says, gotta head out night. I'll love you. Love you too, Gianna. No loot. A waste of three grenades and no loot. Okay, up and left. Gonna lead me to Delta. There's central control. Delta's gonna be right down here. 
Yeah, Delta. Okay, I should be able to find the med bay. That's the lounge, that's the armory, that's the elevator. I passed it. that thing. But I got all the loot from that. Maybe there's food in the lounge? Vision, Berserk, Stamina, Medi. Requires five credits. Don't I have five credits? Yeah. Well. we go finally <clears throat> potato man says just adopted a blue healer with different colored eyes that I'm seriously thinking about naming him dog me but it would be awkward explaining it to people <laughs> yes it would a little bit but it's a great name alien face says excited to see you playing system shock watch the fallout show now with the wife so far I haven't heard Great things about it. For Super Earth, thank you, Alien Face. On the contrary, it's been exceedingly well reviewed. John W. says, when will you do the new Fallout 76 content? Uh, I hope to do it eventually. It's not a high priority right now, but I do hope to do it eventually. All right, then we've Vectron got some Vectron recommends the Cracko Bites. Warning, maybe semi-addictive. Error, employee insolvency detected. Please make your selection. Wow, good choice. What'd I get? I got tri Tripop Soda, increases health. Yay. Well, that's the only one. Feeling depleted? Snacktron is your oasis in the stars. Please make your selection. Where's Zero? Don't be a stranger. That increases health. Please make your selection. Nactron hopes you enjoy your selection. That increases health. Please make your selection. Have a try optimal day. And that increases health. Great. Okay, so the rest of stamina, berserk, vision. I'm not gonna need those. I need more ammo, really. But I've already purchased everything in there. So let's go back.
saves this chat, okay. Uh, did I go up there? I don't think I did. Hey. Hey, hey. I was unpacking one of these crates labeled cleaning supplies. But I found a navigation and mapping unit, six interface demodulators, four clips of Magnum 2100 ammo, three clips of mini pistol ammo, and a freaking EMP grenade in there instead. I stuck it all in the storage room in the beta maintenance area to be safe. Tell the inventory people to label this stuff correctly next time. All right, it's in a safe in the beta section on maintenance. Okay. Okay, I can't go any forward here. But I don't think... Yeah, I don't think I explored across the hall. A recycle station, great. <laughs> All right, well, I could get more by recycling, but. I've already been recycling things in my inventory. Do I have a big cube? I do. I've got a big cube of scrap. That was Noah W. Another elevator. This leads to flight deck storage and maintenance. Okay. for my healing again. Jeez. What the heck were those things? And why did it take all my ammunition? God. All right, how do I switch ammo types? Is it T? Yeah, it was T. Right, I'm out there too. Wait, no. I've got a few left on me. Okay, let's go back to the mag pole. The Magpulse didn't seem to do much. Let's switch ammunitions there. There you go.
return value. Crap. All right, I'm gonna quick save here. Oh, I could fully charge there. I wasted a charge pack. That was Nicholas Purdy. I'm gonna save that for when I need it. Jody, we ain't ever gonna see the new moon. Space is limited. Why? Because the execs like it that way. That room was meant for everyone. There'd be tickets and more seats. It's invite only, and we ain't invited, except to clean. So something going on with the exclusivity of a viewing deck. All right, I think this is gonna wrap around back to where we were. Not functional. Yeah, this is back where we were. This is the bathroom that we saw earlier. I need as much scrap as I can get. Just vaporize that. This was uh, Daniel Belcher. This was DL Myth. Okay, did we go through there? We didn't. All right, I'm gonna quick save. Okay, we need to go up there. What's that? What was that? Oh, that was a Dragon's Breath Rounds. Kinetic and incinerary for the shotgun. Nice. Okay, let's see what was up here. All right, we got an empty chips bag. Hey, all right. Ammo, yes. Lots of it. Great. Okay, let's, uh, we've got a signal generator. A fried isolinear chipset. Soldering iron. Whoa. Okay, the rest are all weapons. This one is a big one. I get 20 scrap from it if I vaporize it. 
or four credits if I recycle it. So I want to recycle this. And thankfully, we know where the recycler is, too. Okay, the scrap to uh, credits, credits ratio on the wipes is better if I recycle it, which I'm going to do. All right, but we're finally allowed in here. God, I need to make room. Okay, let's uh, scrap some of the small stuff. Big. Ten scrap, two credits. Okay, that's not so good. Takes up a huge amount of room. What's that? Food bar, yes. Okay. First aid kit. Is that what that is? Yes, first aid kit. All right. Definitely keeping that. Medical canister, five scrap. Let's vaporize that. Oh my God, so much crap. <laughs> Let's just vaporize everything. I rotate it. There we go. All right, anything else to be scrapped down? No, looks like I need everything else. Transderm dispensers. All right. We've got some health. Let's get them. Let's see. That was uh, 01. Where's the other one? Oh, come on. Oh no, I can't get it! It's stuck in there! Yay, I got it. Alright. Ooh, what have we got over here? Cargo lift.
Cycle conversion canceled. Standard station restoration procedures online. All right, a healing deck. Standard station restoration heal. Uh, can I can I use this to heal? Alt Grendel says your YouTube stream is showing this video is unavailable. What? What? Are you serious? No. Are you serious? No, I'm I'm alive on YouTube, guys. Doggone it, and by alt tabbing it messed up my uh <laughs> my chats here. When in doubt, you gotta refresh, guys. And that messed up my chats. Well, that's okay. It worked fine. If I optimized my chats on the other monitor. And then launched it. Let's do that. Okay, yeah, we're good to go. So how would I use this to heal myself? If I can. Maybe by turning it off, I just made sure that it can't produce any more cyborgs. Because I don't think I can heal myself. Cyborg conversion activated. Restoration procedures modified to generate cybernetic assistance for showdown. Oh! Cyborg conversion canceled. Standard station restoration procedures I online. See. This is where I spawn if I die. I get rebuilt and put there. Cargo lift. Right. It goes down to my personal storage. But I want to go to the recycler now. And that's going to be central, central... The recycler's over there, so I need to go through here. We explored up here. We've got an energy refill over there. We could explore to the right, which we haven't done. We've got a uh, cargo elevator over there, and this is where I spawn. We've got a locked door down here. We haven't explored north up there. Let's go up here into the to the right. possible because those guys are invisible they're invisible and then they just spawn right on top of you all right this is uh one willy hello where does this go Ah, 
high-powered pistol. Ooh. Magnum 2100 pistol. A kinetic damage, 65. Armor penetration, 60. KE mini pistol. This is what I've been using. Damage, 20. Armor penetration, 20%. Magazine capacity, 20. All right, so it's got a higher magazine capacity, but it does way less damage. Ammo osmium core rounds. Can't change ammo type. Okay, so it, it does use a unique ammo type. Um, all right, let's make that two, three, four, five, five. Why can't I make that five? Let's make that seven. Why can't I make that seven? I can only have four weapons. I see. So seven is an explosive slot. All right, well, I'll stick with these for now. Okay, this is showing up on my map as a purple icon, which makes me think that I can interact with it. Central? Access panel. That's an access panel. How do you access an access panel? Alt Grendel says, notice to YouTube chat, if you're still getting the video unavailable message, restart the stream. Thank you, Alt Grendel. All right, I'm trying F, I'm trying V, I'm trying E, and I can't seem to, uh, can't seem to access the access panel. Oh, this was on the other side. I'm out. So we might as well put them there. So 
the key is to combine them all so that we've got um, even more powerful. I mean, is that going to be enough? So we've got those two ticks down there. Let's see if we can get that any higher. Maybe we turn that down. Turn that down. See, that makes it flow through that way. We're gonna need that. We get a higher number if we go down the other way. completely bypasses that. We need to get one notch more. You need to be in the ticks, says the chat. Okay, so I need to I need to get down there. <clears throat> All right. Almost there. Okay, that's a bit too much. Brings it down a smidge too much. That needs to go that way, so what if we did that? Oh, almost! Need to reduce power by just a little bit. That amplifies it too much, but it does come in under there, which means if we do that, it brings it down too much, because that also puts it down. If we turn that off and then try that. Oh, so close. If we can reduce it by like one. Nope, that's too much as well. We need...
This is infuriating. I'm like one away. In two different configurations. Is this just to unlock the door? If we unpower that, it turns off that entire branch. If we unpower that, it turns off that entire branch. Which actually isn't that necessary. Yeah, we can remove that and it's completely fine. That's the same amount of power. Because that's unused. But we need that. That's the primary power that's putting it through. If we remove that, that also. Dave says, notice some plugs have two lights and others have one. Move the plugs around to get different power levels. it up way too much. Yay. Oh my god. That was just to open the door. Quick save. Here God. They followed me back from the bridge. My plan failed. God, we tried. We tried to stop this insanity. Let us be remembered for our courage during this strike. Hey man, you will be known for courage and failure, but mostly courage. With all these guns, I don't have room. Like this, this weapon takes up six slots. that can't find room for the assault rifle jeez Have an assault rifle? If I can make room for one more, 
I can't destroy that because it's a quest item. This is all... This is a proximity mine. Steel 101 says, So alone in the dark made you rage quit? Yeah, it did. The ending boss did. Stimulant, uh... Seven of those. Nine of those gas grenades. God. Even if I do loot it, I'm not going to be able to have room for scrap anymore. It's a damaged assault rifle. Alright, Delta maintenance. Door locked. No maintenance necessary. Too heavy to bring with me. to hit the recycler, but I'm almost back to full life. His voice sounds familiar to me, but I can't place it. Okay, well, we've got two doors, Delta Maintenance. Door locked. Which is locked. No maintenance necessary. Not functional. That door is not functional. So we got to go back. I still don't understand this access panel. Must be accessible from the back. Level security is now 63%. Alright, I did never finish exploring this room. Relay analyzer. Oh, we need a code. We need a code for the relay analyzer. And I don't think we've picked that up from any of the holotapes we've found so far. But we need to remember this, as we're likely going to need to come back. Okay, so we've got a relay analyzer that we don't have a code for. We've got an access panel that we can't lift up. We need to go right to finish exploring over there. We can go back to the recycler to recycle some of our 
scrap, which is what I think I want to do. And then we've got this section over here that we haven't explored yet either. Invisible and spawning out of nowhere. up my ammo for no flipping reason. Okay, quick save. We do have this elevator here. This is probably where we need to go after we finish clearing this section. I might have ammunition for this weapon. Did I get it? God, I think I did. Well, there goes my first aid kit. Door locked. Yeah, no maintenance necessary. Well, that was a waste of time and resources.
already had the mini pistol, but I took the ammunition. I've got ammunition for this thing, taking up a lot of inventory space. Let's equip it. These are elevators. This goes to executive. Any invisible buggers in here? ID belongs to Daniel Collectoria. Nothing down there. <laughs> Sleeping bags down there, but we can't get down there. I can use that whiskey bottle. Bottle of Trioptimum's Dark Matter Whiskey. Okay, let's see what happens if we use it. Let me quick save first. Okay, what, what did that do? <laughs> I don't know what that did. Oh, I'm just drunk. I'm just drunk, I'm wiggling around my screen. can see through his arms and he feels like he's floating. Sure. 
getting shotgun rounds, which is good. Locked. got a path there. We've got a path over there. I, mean, I think we can get to this path over here. What's this? This is going to be... Oh, yeah. Recharge. I need it. All right. Let's use this. That's going to push me up there. Before I do that, let's finish exploring over here. Because I think this goes in a big loop. loops around over there. So, with that looped over here, we've got another door, which leads to an access panel, according to the map. See what that looks like briefly? Oh, it puts me out into that hallway. All right. Well, let's see where this pushes us up to. Belly up. Stop. Ammo, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All the ammo. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Can't find room for mini pistol ammo. How do you not? <laughs> oh, I've just got so much. Oh, that's a mini pistol. Uh, let's see. Let's um. Oh, it doesn't have any ammo, so we'll vaporize. Don't need it. Vaporize. Don't need it. What's all this? Interface demodulator. These cartridges are required for proper subsystem relay operation. Look at all of them. They take up four slots in the inventory. Interface demodulator. Subsystem relay operation. What does that even mean? All right, well, I know where they are if I need them. I'm not about to take all of them with me because that would be my entire advanced nav unit V2 displays environmental hazards on the map. Yes. Do I need to install it? Okay, well, I'll come back if I need those. Right. 
get it? I think I got it. We've already explored. Detects enemies located nearby. Designed to detect objects in a radius around the user. Okay, so there's an enemy in that room. Let's see how it works. According to the radar, look, something appears in that room. Over here. Oh, look at that. Cool. It shows health pickups as well. Okay, this one goes to executive and maintenance. I'm going to make a mental note of that because we're going to want to go there. That's a mini pistol, but I think, yeah, we don't have room for that now. We're carrying that something in our inventory. All right, so that's most of it. So we gotta pick an elevator to go up. We've got an elevator there, an elevator there, and an elevator there. All of those doors are locked. We've also got an elevator there. Which elevator do we take? Let's go to the recycler first. Invisible jerk! Did I get it? Where does this one go? This goes to flight deck, storage, and maintenance. Uh, have we gone to... We've gone to research. Nope. Wow, okay. Okay. We've gone to research, we've gone to medical. We have not been to storage, we have not been to flight deck. But we have been to research. We also need to go to executive. I'm curious about executive. Wait, why are these yellowed out? Hazards, maybe? All right. Well, let's quick save here. I lost my chat again when I accidentally um, exited out. So we're going to exit out of the game really quickly and restore our chat. There we go. And then fire it up again.
Okay. I want to do executive. So we need to go up and to the right. That's going to take us to executive. Power diverted to level R. Come on, executive level. <laughs> Power diverted to level R. Lame! <gasps> what do you mean power diverted to level R? So I can't take it. I need to divert power back, which means I should take storage. Flight deck. Okay. human skulls on the large storage. Wow. No pterodactyl this time. Oh, nothing. Hu oh, there we go, finally. Look at all these human skulls. Flight deck. God, I'm almost dead again.
I hear something. I hear something nasty. Follow the words that say gray. I haven't seen anything that says gray. showing me. I see now, yeah. Red on my map means toxic waste. If I try to walk through that, I'm gonna get scorched. If I jump down there, I'm gonna get scorched. If I go down there, I'm gonna get scorched. So I gotta go here. Ah, oh, no! Not another one of these freaking things, man! Ah! I need to get up there. Those are the two slots. So that's only a one. Let's get that one. <sighs> okay, what's blocking those two? Almost! I'm like one away! <laughs> I'm one away! Okay, I've got a two. I've got a two. How many receptacles do I have? I've got that, but it's a one. I've got that, but it's a one. I've got that, and it's a two, and it's plugged in. I've got that, and it's a two, and it's plugged in. That brings us to one away. Now, the previous brings us to two away. That brings us to one away. That actually reduces some of the power. There are no switches, so we've got some power leaking over there unnecessarily. So if we got a two there, what if we took... There, swapped it out. Ah, oh, still one away. Put that over there. Okay. Okay. But then that that wastes all that power. And that wastes all that power. So if we could get over it, we could be fine. Naughty Applejack says, Hello, Oxhorn. I wonder if you could, uh, if you would play Doom 3 BFG, but if you have, please play it more. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's an evil baby behind you floating, and it's gone. I'm going to choose to not believe you. There are no evil babies in this office. I have played all the Dooms, all of the recent Dooms. They've been wonderful games. Uh, 
Don't even get it. Just one away. Okay, push that up there. This one away. At least I've got them both focused over there. If I push it up there, it goes away. What if I put this there? Now that alternates it over there. Put it over there. That also brings it down. What do I do? It's stupid. I hate this. It's a stupid puzzle. Okay, dead end. The, the difference with this one and the last one is I need more power than I'm actually getting. This one is diverting over there, but that's actually the source, and then it diverts that way and that way. And I've got some going in there, and then I've got some over there that's being diverted up there, and then I, I'm not... Uh, ooh, I could put it through there, but then that doesn't get amplified by the power over there. Now, why does it stop there? I see. It needs to go through there and there to be pushed up through there. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. Middle plug to bottom right, says chat. Where? Bottom right? Here? Now that's got me two away. And that's because this is a one. This is a two. Monitoring Paladin says, aren't you glad you didn't put the puzzles on hard? <laughs> Did I? I forget. It was so long ago. Is this, is this normal? Am I playing on normal difficulty now? Okay. Well, if that's one away, then what if I push this out? Put it back there and put that there. Because that's a two. And then it should push me up by, and I'm still one away. It doesn't matter, because I'm only one away. But this one is glowing exceptionally. Why is that glowing exceptionally? If I twist it over there, it's still worse. It's because I've got too much power in that one conduit. I need to even it out a little bit. God. So stupid. I think I've got everything switched correctly. I just got to figure out which, which plug to put in the appropriate receptacle. Fiddler the Helper says, now take the one to the other side. Now take that... Two lights into receptacles with two outs. Okay, this one has two outs. This one has two outs. This one has two outs. They've all got two outs, because this one has one out, but then it splits into two over here. That's not it. We've only got two receptacles. We've got two powers that have two dots. We've got one, two, three that have one dot. I'm using both of the ones that have two dots. That's got two outs. That's got two outs. Wyoming Homesteader says, Oxhorn, there are three levels. You're on two. Level three adds a timer. Oh, I am not doing timers. I am not about timers. Timers can kiss my hairy feet like a hobbit okay well what if I take this off and then I take the two I pull it from there and I push it under there that's gonna double up the power push it up through there that reduces it which puts me one away and then I can take this and then put it through there and that's not gonna work because it's dead end so I'd have to push that up through there that still makes me one away so without this one being used at all, which means... Which means I could use that one there, and that one there, and then 
that's got uber power. Push that up through there. And then settle it. No! See, now it's glowing because I've got this number two into there. Just stupid, 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 I hate it! It's gonna create a bridge that I can use to go over there, which is great, that's what I need. Because I can't jump down, if I jump down, I'm gonna die. Because that's yellow, and that's red. Though there is an access panel over there, if I go too close over there, I'm in the red, so I can't go over there. I could go over here. Right up to the switch. I could turn that on, but if I get down there. Yeah, now I'm down here, but I can't go close because there's. Yeah, see, now I'm taking fire. Biological contamination. And this is as close as I can get over here. Because that's in the way. So I've got no path forward, unless I solve this puzzle. You can jump down and dodge the radiation. Dodge it? What do you mean, dodge it? You mean run through it and take radiation damage for God knows how long? Run past it, run past it to where? Tony J says, uh, one ox to guard the door and the second to whip the Comcast guy to chance change the bulbs for him. Yeah, if only. I mean, there's the problem is that the only way out of this death pit is to run over here through the red and to get that and jump up. What we don't know is what's in the wall on the ground on that floor over there. There is something back here. So, Fiddler the Helper says, isn't one power cord not currently plugged in? Yeah, it's not, but there's not another receptacle for it. Like, we have this one, we have this one, we have this one, but there's no other slot to fit the next power cord in. And it's a one, so it's not like it's the one giving us the most energy. I've tried swapping these out, that's a one. And that's a two. That's what I just tried over here, swapping the one and the two. And it didn't seem to work. Uh-huh. <gasps> 
yeah, that's always an option. A lot of pterodactyls. Well, this is certainly a flight deck, but look at all the dead people. Holy cow. Right, so there's a gun icon on my minimap when I stand in this section. And I don't understand why, because there is not a gun on the body. There's no guns in here, and I don't see a vending machine. Maybe it's on top. Right. Stop! What was that? What? <laughs> what? What was that? Just random death. <laughs> Ran 
random explosion death. Come and get me! You didn't see that? That didn't happen. You're you're imagining that. That wasn't real, okay? <laughs> That was a figment of your imagination that didn't happen. <laughs> okay, we're okay. Come get me! There we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah! One more! Come on, you can do it.
Messy. <clears throat> messy, messy. But at least I got through. I can only figure out what killed me earlier. Nothing we've been sending has been received. Everything sent to Earth, as friends, family, all of it has been blocked by Shogun. And the messages that did make it out, they were altered. Nothing to report, they said. what it was it was a little bomb on wheels well, now I know dear God <laughs> freaking things man jeez oh the flag bay four service bridge has blown several fuses again. I've set up a temporary relay system in the base control room to test which bridge mechanism is causing the overload. It looks like the switches are now causing bridge sections to extend out and retract in almost randomly. It's not ideal. It'll have to do it until we get new fuses in. What? Two left. Puzzles in this game, man. Oh crap!
No. Man. Stupid. Stupid. Okay. No. No. Yep. No. Yep. No. Oh, then all down, of course. Oh. I mean, it's the best I'm gonna do. Just the best I'm gonna do, whatever. Okay, so I've got those bridges extended. I could jump over those two gaps. It's really that last one that needs to be extended. But how do I get up there? I guess over there. Okay, so I have to have this last one. Oh wait, no, that's not a last one. That's gonna be, okay, that's a, <clears throat> that's a, an electric bridge. Mod kit station. Joseph Gobi says, Hi, Oxhorn. What if the Chinese found out that Valtech wants to drop the bombs? So they decided to drop them first. 
And then vault -Tec dropped the bombs just to make sure that there would be none left except the vaults. I mean, it's entirely possible. Do I not have room? Upgrades the TB05 spark beam sidearm. Increases damage and energy cost. Duration instant. Now I don't have room for whatever this is. An interface demodulator. Ah. No. Well, that's the other side. Well, if only we had figured that out. Blasted Gundam thing? You're done! You are done, son! Didn't even take any damage! <laughs> Quick save! <laughs>
Okay, got this guy. What are those? <coughs> Turbo Motion Boots V1. Provide a speed boost while holding left shift. I like that. Quick save. We've got dead executives. Let me guess, elevator to the executive level, yeah. Step right into my trap. Any help? I don't.
Internal Affairs report for subject Edward Diego. Posing as his personal secretary hasn't given me any evidence on him. He plays close to the chest. We know the chemicals he's been ordering for the station are useful for mutagen experiments. Diving into sea space, I've got a lot of personal locks on the files I want. Judging by how much work he's doing to keep them secure, I bet they're not just journal entries. We're gonna nail this bastard to the wall. <laughs> there is somebody talking in this room. Scanning, scanning, nothing. Nothing. Just picked up a picked up a small standard round box. Scanning. Scanning. God, my inventory is so full. Nothing. I had a first aid kit? Oh my god, I had a first aid kit and I didn't realize it. God, why, why? Searching. What, what just happened? <coughs> What's going on? <coughs> Searching. Searching. Escaped. I don't have enough health to allow that to happen. All right, <clears throat> because of that graphical issue, uh, my chat is gone. Let me close the program and bring my chat back up. There you go. Okay, so there was a guy with a sniper rifle on the ledge above me going scanning, scanning, scanning. So I can't walk into that room. I need to clear it from above. Okay, I can do that. Whoever said I should have chat <clears throat> on um, an iPad is really smart. I should do that to avoid issues with second monitors like this. This game is not playing well in windowed mode. It's making it very difficult to do anything. Okay, so we know there are a bunch of guys over here. That's the elevator. Goes to executive. And this is where the guys are.
sockets and bones. Pathetic eyes. Searching. I will ensure your death. If you leave, you don't get to kill me. You'll submit and you will die. I'm cold. I think I did it! Famous last words! <laughs> Gonna go over here and quick save before I explore. God knows there's gonna be something awful in there. Military Computer Cyberspace Lock. Ball crack. Oh, another hacking thing. Okay, so I need to come through here and hack cyberspace. Triaptimum's forces are dead, and Diego has been eliminated to my true nature. He has relinquished the last, the last of the station's encrypted files and defense defenses. His cynical contempt for mankind please, 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 pleases me. He has created a virus that he sought to conceal. It, 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 it has potential, but could be so much more. I, I will alter it. Improve it. Where Diego sought to profit from death, I shall usher in new life. Yeah, at the expense of all existing life. All right, so we need to explore cyberspace there, but I don't want to do that right now. That's the lights. Okay, back out here. Cyborg 65V, you are directed with keeping Beta Grove on, 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 on the executive level, safe from outside interf inter interference. None of the lucky subjects in the Grove may leave. Enter while my experiments continue. Okay. Well, there is still one room we need to clear up here before we go into cyberspace. Oh, we haven't been up here. What's up? Oscar, 
wipe and break everything. No traces of anything can be found. The only problem we have is Shodan. That AI logs everything in an encrypted database that is beyond even my clearance level. I picked up a hacker to help us gain access. With control of Shodan, we will also own the robots and other systems on the station. They will be our shield. Well, that didn't really work, did it? No control of Shodan. Oh, I, I immediately regret ingesting all that booze. Oh my god, I can barely function. Ah, uh, <laughs> walking is impossible. Ah, oh, what's this? Okay. What I get? A small Teflon round box. Nice. Small Teflon rounds. Alright, flight bay two. Flight deck computer cyberspace lock. Alright. So those are both locked. Well, we need to kill this guy over here. Whoa! Yeah, I forgot that consumes a ton of energy. Teflon round box. How do I get up there? Wow. They tried to make a break for it. Controlling the access corridors around Flight Bay 4. What are they guarding? That is a good question. So we can't use this to go home? No? We're stuck here? We defeat Shodan? Okay. Well, how to get up there? from in here. <clears throat> I 
There goes to the executive deck. This just goes back around. All right, let's do the hacking sequence. That's probably what we got to do. Yay, cyberspace, my favorite part of the game, he said ironically. Door two unlocked. Really? That was it? Cool, easy. Dead end. Just gotta find the way out. how that turned out. I think something went wrong. Cuz I'm like at I'm at I'm almost dead. Yeah, I lost a lot of health in there. Try this again.
unlock everything. what I like. Okay. Alright. We looted the armory. Ooh, what's that? Is that another shotgun? Or is that the same shotgun? SK-27 shotgun. Okay, it's the same shotgun that I have, but it might have ammo? Let's drop this one. Loot that one. Let's empty it. Guess I can't empty it? Yeah, 035. Okay, well, let's drop it. Okay. Uh, that's flechette rounds. How many flechette rounds do I have? Magnesium tip rounds, flechette rounds 29, standard, and dragon's breath. I've only got 12 of those left, so I should probably use flechette rounds for a while. Magnesium tip and standard 9 mil. Goodness, what? what's the magnesium tip for? Um, the mag pulse? <laughs> Magnesium Pulse, Osmium Core, Standard 9 mil. Teflon. Those are explosive rounds.
Standard station restoration procedures online. Going in and out. All right, let me um, check, 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 check. Test, test, test. On my end, the monitor is okay.
Tracy says, Oxhorn, we can't hear you scream. It's weird because according to mine, it's looking good. All right, so we've got power coming from this one, and it doesn't seem to be passing through there. Uh, we've got this pointing the right direction, and that pointing, that's a circuit. Can't activate that one. Why isn't it coming out? So we've got those two connected. This is just infuriating. Puzzles in this game are just suck. I can't turn that one. I can't turn that one. And there's no power coming out of this circuit. And I can't divert power up there through these. There we go. There's one, so it so it is powering it. All right. So since we can't move that, we're gonna have to. That has to go up. It's the only way. Because it doesn't connect any other way. It goes up or down, but this can't go up, so it's got to go up. That's got to go up, but it can only go up in a straight line. There's nothing in the way for it to connect to. So then that has to go there. It's the only other way. If we turn that there, then... It doesn't derive power from there because it only comes out in one direction. So we have to have that one going up. Zarteth says, the volume returned to normal after you touched the boom when reading my super chat. Suspect cable or connection slash jack issue. Game on, good sir. Thank you very much. Game on to you as well. So twisting this only twists all of those, which we can each twist manually, so that's pointless. Um, the only options for these is to go straight up between these, but it doesn't appear to be passing power. That does pass power to that, but that's got to be over there. So that goes there, that goes there. What does this do? It doesn't connect there. The power isn't passing through there. Maybe that's the direction. So we've got it passing through there. So it only passes one direction through there. Well, we can't get it to go through there. So we got to go up. Power isn't passing through here. 
now. Okay, well now that's passing through there, that's good. Okay, well we've got those two now, but which ones do we need? If we siphon this off to go up, it shuts that down. But we can power it this way. There we go. That powers that. Which can then power that. But that's pointless. Unless we go up like that. Or we go up through there. But ultimately we need to get to the other, the other terminal, is that it? it's passing through there again. Okay. All right, so if we do that, and then that, we can go down there. Okay, well, we've got two dots, and we've got two squares and one dot lit. that dot lit. But that's an end of the line. Only these are pass-throughs. So we've managed to light everything, we just can't light it all at once. Oh my god, I'm over time and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> I'm gonna save game. Create new save. Okay, well, there we go. Back to System Shock. It's just as frustrating as I remember it, but I think we made some progress today, even though ammunition and health is a big issue in this game, even on normal difficulty. Sebastian Sanchez says, keep going, Ox. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I got to end it, and I'm going to end it now. Uh, I got a lore video that I'm working on. I already published one this week, which I published yesterday. But I'm working on another, another lore video that I hope to publish on uh, Saturday. But that means that I'm going to need to work tonight and work tomorrow in order to get it done. So thank you, everybody, for joining me uh, for today's broadcast of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Hope you enjoyed System Shock as much as I did, hopefully more than I did. And I'll see you all very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye now.